In this video, we're going to take a look at independent and dependent events and finding the probability of each type. Let's first talk about independent and dependent events. Independent events are ones where no matter what happened previously, it has no effect on the next time that happens. So, for example, if we are flipping a coin, if we flip heads and then heads and then tails and then heads, and then heads and then heads and then heads sometimes people might like to think that ooh I've only had one heads and out of all these flips I must be more likely to get a tails well it turns out that you're not it, it doesn't make any difference because each time that coin has a one-half chance of getting a heads or getting a tails so we need to be very careful and remember that those are independent events because it doesn't matter what I flipped previously I still have a one-half chance of getting whichever one I'm interested in now dependent events those the probability changes depending on what happened to the prior one so for example if we have a deck of cards and we're pulling out uh, let's say we're pulling out a two okay well, if I take one two out, the next time, how many twos are going to be left? There's only going to be three left. So that probability changes depending on what I pulled out the previous time. So that will be a dependent event. So the probability to, f or the formula to find each of those for an independent event, the probability of A and B happening, we just multiply the two probabilities. For dependent events, the probability of A and B happening, we take the probability of A, so that's the same, but then we multiply by the probability of B, assuming that A happened. So we'll talk about how that fits in, but we assume that it happened, and then find the probability of our second situation. So here we go. Let's take a look at a few examples. This first one says the probability of flipping tails, tails, heads on a coin on a series of three flips. Well, for the first flip, first of all, is it independent or dependent? Well, we talked about flipping a coin, as long as it's a fair coin, is an independent event. It doesn't matter if you got a head or a tail the previous time. The next one, still have a one-half chance of getting either one. So the probability of flipping a tail would be one half. The probability of flipping that tail is going to be one half as well. And finally, the probability of flipping heads is going to be one half as well. So multiply those all together. One half times one half times one half would be one eighth. Now, you might say, oh, that doesn't seem that rare. But what about the probability of three tails in a row? Well, three tails in a row that would be one half times one half times one half which is also equal to one eighth so it might seem like oh three tails in a row that's really rare well it's just as rare as two tails and then a head uh, out of those three the probability is one eighth for both so keep that in mind in some of these situations okay next one probability of drawing an ace replacing it and then drawing another ace from a deck of cards okay let's see is this an independent or a dependent event well do things change from the first time to the second time well if I'm replacing the card that I drew hmm let's take a look at it one piece at a time here so the probability of drawing an ace out of a deck of cards, well, how many aces are there? Four out of a total of 52 cards. Then it says replacing it and drawing another ace. Well, if it's replaced, there's still 52 cards there. So I'm just going to multiply by another 4 over 52, which is going to give me, well, we can do some simplification if we want here. 4 divided by 52 would be 1 13th times 1 13th. So 1 13th times 1 13th. And 1 times 1, of course, is 1. And 13 times 13 is 169. 
So my probability of drawing an ace, replacing it, and drawing another ace would be 1 out of 169. Now, let's take a look at this next one. It says the probability of drawing a king and then another king, but we're not replacing it this time. Huh. So do things change? Well, yes, because there's a king gone, and then we're looking for another king in the second draw, but there's going to be one less king available because one's all out already, and there's also one less card that we're working with. So probability of drawing a king the first time would be four, because there's four kings, out of 52. Then we multiply that by, remember, a dependent event. We multiply that by the probability of B, assuming that A happened. So we assume that here we drew out one of those kings. So how many kings are left now? Three. And then how many cards are left? Well, 51. There's just one card that's been taken out. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do some simplification here. 4 and 52 again simplifies to 1 13th. So we have times 3 over 51. Multiply, we get 3 out of 13 times 51. It's going to give us. Six hundred and sixty three. Looks like we can simplify that. Let's divide by three on the top and bottom there. So six sixty three divided by three is going to give us two twenty one. One out of two twenty one. So notice the difference. If it's independent where we're replacing the card, the chances are one out of one hundred sixty nine. If it's dependent, meaning we're not replacing the card, there's a different probability from the first time to the second. Notice how, ooh, now it's only 1 out of 221. So there is a very distinct difference there. So keep in mind, typically if there's replacement, it's going to be an independent event because then we'll have the same situation for each of our trials. If there's not replacement, then typically it's going to be a dependent event because the probability is going to change depending on what you've pulled out. And remember, we assume that we pulled out the right thing for A so that when we find the probability of B based on that. Again, independent and dependent events. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math, and I know you'll do great.